Hey guys, what's going on? This is Atrave here, and in this video, we're gonna look at Tailwind CSS Motion by Rombo. So basically, this is a library or a plugin for Tailwind CSS, which allows you to do animations pretty easily using Tailwind. So you do not need to do a lot of different CSS animations or do all sorts of different things. You just need to add class names to the things you want to animate, and it's just as easy as that, and it just works. So in this video, we are going to look at the website documentation and they also have a handy tool which allows you to create animations and it also gives you the classes that you need to use. And then we are also going to create a Next.js application and we are going to use this library and see how it works. So yeah, let's get started. All right, so we are here at the Tailwind CSS Motion website, which says Motion made simple for Tailwind CSS, a, a new simple syntax animation library, batteries included, infinitely configurable. And it's open source, of course, and you can see all sorts of different animations here. So they have presets. So if we hover around the bounce one, you can see it bounces. Then we have a typewriter one, then we have seesaw one, which are basically presets. And then we have like some complex ones. Uh, which is basically like this a flight one and then we have the star which rotates not really complex but the class names actually look a little bit more complex than the presets one then simple interface infinite configura uh, configurability and intuitive syntax built for movement accessibility and performance tested and optimized you can read all of this uh, so basically what you need to do is you just need to install this package and you just need to add the plugin uh, then you can see all the things here so basically fade you can see the animations happening right here. So slide, focus. I think my favorite one is focus. Uh, you can use that in model and also shrink one. It also looks very good. Um, I think bounce is pretty good for toasts. I'm actually going to create that. Let's uh, like not in this video, but like off video. But uh, yeah, I think these are pretty cool. Uh, compress, is, compress is also very good for uh, models or pop up or something like that dialogues which ask you to enter your input or something like that so yeah and then you have this tool we are going to look at this uh, tool right now so basically it gives you the class names to do something uh, actually you know what before this we should go through documentation because there's something very important I want to show you I'm gonna open this documentation in a new tab and uh, we're gonna see what are the three different types of classes you can use so one is like a base animations like we saw here which uh, which are basically basic things like translating and uh, these are basically base classes you can use this to create some complex animations then there are presets number two uh, ready-made combinations uh, which are basically these ones these are all presets and then you have modifiers fine tune any animations behavior basically you can add delays you can pause the animation or you can resume the animation whatever you want to do okay so if we go into the base animations you can see how base animations work so basically the class name consists of motion property direction and value so and uh, basically you have property which is like all of these things Direction is basically in, so for entrance animations, out for exit animations, and loop for continuous animations and value. So basically, it says uh, div class uh, motion opacity in zero, motion translate y in hundred. So like if we reload this animation, you will see that this is coming from down. Now, basically how this works is uh, when you are specifying uh, entrance animations, you basically give an initial you know an initial point from which the animation will start and then it will animate to a point to the default one so basically this is the default state right now it's pretty understood and uh, you just provide the initial state and it will automatically or auto, auto like automatically animate to the default state now there's one more thing you might be wondering that opacity is fine though the initial opacity must be zero right so it's starting from zero and then slowly becoming opaque but what about motion translate y in 100 why is it coming from down like why should be 100 upright so like i don't know how many people are confused by this but i was so basically the down is positive and up is negative in y-axis uh this is a little bit confusing for me because like from what i have learned in school i might have learned wrong but uh, x is like up and y sorry y is like up and x is like on the right uh but yeah in this one like it's uh, y is down uh it's it was a little confusing for me but yeah whatever so 
yeah that's how it works now we can just go look at the playground so you have all of these things what you need to do if you want to like craft an animation you just like drag this on how how much you want to animate so if i want to animate uh, so basically this black box will be your initial state and uh, yeah it basically just animates to this one now i can basically rotate this as well i can rotate this to something like this yeah you can see how this happens right and then you get all these class names right uh, you get a uh, rotate you get a y in zero because we didn't actually change the y axis at all we only rotated it and you also get the motion translate x in 37 so the x axis is correct like towards the right side you will get positive and uh yeah the degree is like 30 degree i can also make it 90 if i want to um yeah basically it, yeah it, it works like that you can do all of different things like you can even change the opacity uh to okay i don't know how this one works but uh Oh yeah, it's basically giving all the, so this is basically more complex one. So what I just did, it was like, actually it waited for some time. So I think uh, that's a very good point to like check out uh, the presets, sorry, not the presets, the modifiers, because here there are a lot of different things. You can actually have the animation duration. You have the animation delay, like after how much time the animation should start easing play state, like when, like there are, if there are some times you want to like play or pause and like there are loop counts like there are a lot of different things you can do and like as it is maintained more there are going to be a lot more capabilities in the store so yeah uh, we can go ahead and we can get started with using this in a next.js application so like every other video i'm not like uh, i usually create a next.js application in the video itself but to save time i'm actually going to not do that and i'm just going to create a next.js app and just get right into it uh, by this time, I think you should already know how to create a Next.js application. I hope you know, please. Uh, or basically, if you don't want to use Next.js, that's fine as well. As long as you have a Tailwind enable project, you can get this to work. It's it's not a big deal. So yeah, let's go. All right, so we are in our VS Code and Terminal, of course, and now we need to actually install the package. So we can go back to the homepage. We already have the command here. So uh, we, we are not going to use NPM. Uh, we are just already just, we are just going to copy this. Uh, this is a uh, developer dependency. So we are just going to do uh, bun install. Since we are using bun, if you're using other package manager, you can use their command. So bun install developer dependency and we're just going to add tailwind CSS motion. Remember that this is, that this is tailwind CSS motion and not just tailwind motion. I made that mistake and it just installs the wrong package. So yeah, and now we can just do bun dev and uh, we can just leave the terminal aside and we can do our thing. Uh, it's starting. Yeah, perfect. Now we can go to tailwind.config.ts file and we can just add the plugin here. So can we can use it anywhere. So uh, tailwind CSS. Oh, oops. Uh, give me the suggestions. Where are my suggestions? Yeah, whenever I'm recording, it's really not that great. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that it's installed properly, you know, like uh, now this we have this boilerplate already and I don't think we are going to remove this. We can simply just add on to it so we can just go ahead and uh, do localhost 3000. OK, this is a bit slow. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I definitely need to upgrade my machine, but yeah, it's basically a next is boilerplate, uh, which has two buttons. Uh, what I want to do is animate these buttons to like have one of those, uh, animations. So if we go back, we are going to start, we are going to try to use the presets first. I think we are going to use, uh, the expand one i think expand one looks nice so if you just go down and find the buttons these are the buttons you can just add the class names here and uh yeah one thing i loved about this like when you copy these class names from from here they already have a space in the end so that you can just paste these here and like it will automatically add a space which i think is a pretty good detail 
so yeah, uh, we, have, we have already saved this. And if we go back and reload, yeah, you can already see uh, these are uh, like animating on reload. So yeah, and now we can just go back and we can just actually look at the duration of this and we can also have a delay, but uh, we are just gonna look at the basic, very basic things here. So we can just go to uh, duration and if I just want a 1500 duration, I can just copy this, which is basically 1.5 seconds. I'm just gonna copy this and I'm just gonna paste these here. Save and we can go back, Re reload. And yeah, it's pretty slow. So yeah, these are working. And one more cool thing is like, you can actually use the power of Tailwind and you can actually add something like hover here and it will just work fine. So yeah, let's see, refresh. And now if you hover on this, yeah. Yeah, it works. You need to actually aim it in the middle. So yeah, it needs a little bit refining, but it works. So yeah, this is how it works. And now I wanted to show you something like creating a model and uh, animating the model itself. And then I can just leave it on to you. All right, now we are gonna try something on a model. So I'm just gonna have a model. I'm just gonna copy the code for a model and uh, we are gonna actually do some stuff. So I'm gonna actually create a new components folder here and add a modal.tsx here and paste this code. So you can just get it from the GitHub repository linked in the uh, description. Uh, basically you can create your own model impl implementation. It's really not that big of a deal. And uh, now what we can simply do is uh, uh, we can actually go back and we need to actually make the model work. So I actually also have the code for that. But first we actually need to go ahead and do uh, use client here. And uh, for model also, you actually need to do use client because this is a client component. But uh, yeah, I think this is since this nested probably already a client component. Any no, I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So now we need to actually have a state. So where are okay? We need to go to the page dot tsx and we need to have the state to keep track if the model is open or not. And now we need to import it. Since we are using a client component on the page, which is, I don't recommend using client component in the page.tsx file, but like for the sake of the tutorial, we can do it. And now we actually need to add a button to create the model. So actually I'm going to copy it. Um, oops. Okay. Uh, let's just go to the read our docs and, uh, just gonna add the button. You can also get this from the repository and I'm also going to add the modal itself. So yeah, after the main tag, I'm just gonna like add this modal. Also going to import it. This is basic implementation of a modal. I'm like really not trying to make this complicated. I, this video is just about like animating it. So basically this, uh, this is basically just a normal, you know, modal you just click a button and this appears but like i have already added this so i'm just going to remove this from now and we can just see how this works so let's go back and we already have the open modal one so if we click on that you will see welcome to the modal but you see that there's no animation and there's no animation it looks pretty ugly so we can just go ahead and uh, add it so here we can simply add the animation save this and if we click on this now, you will see you have a pretty good animation, you know, and now you can also do something like uh, uh, we can also use a base animation here. So motion, uh, you know what motion translate, I think. Yeah. So basically, I just want to start Y in hundred. Yeah, this is exactly what I wanted. It's actually focusing also and it's actually, uh, we can actually make it a little more subtle. I don't want to like make this big deal. A little less can do also. I think 25, do we actually have an option for 25? But yeah. Yeah, I think this is pretty cool. So yeah, this is basically a combination of preset and uh, 
uh, the base animation so this looks pretty cool so for anything that is like simple animations i think this library is pretty great but like if you want to create some animation which are really complex i think you can do that this with this library too but uh like i think like if you go for something like frame of motion i think it would be a little more maintainable later on not really trying to say that this level is not good but i think like if you are not a person who is just like animation junkie or website is all about animations you can use this and uh, this can handle most of the animation but like if you are someone who is like handling like 10000 different animations at the same time i don't think you should use this at all <laughs> so yeah that's my opinion so yeah that's it for this video that's for the tutorial so yeah that's it for this video i hope you learned something new about animations in tailwind i think this library is dope for anything small animations in your website so make sure you go ahead and use this it's open source it's free and i think this is the best thing you can have right now so yeah if you like this video make sure you hit the like button hit the subscribe button and leave a comment below if you have any ideas for future tutorials on this channel or if you have any questions or something like that i'll make sure to answer you at the earliest so yeah that's it for this video i really hope you had an amazing new year and i'm really excited for this year i have a lot of videos planned and i have big plans for this youtube channel coming this year so i'm excited i hope you are excited as well so yeah that's it for this video i'll see you guys in the next one bye